Top colleges in the U.S. claim that publishing a research paper in high school can lead to admissions. But how far is this actually true? And if it is, then how can you do this? Hi everyone, my name is Saloni Verma and I graduated from Cornell in Biomedical Engineering. So far, I've dedicated more than three years of my academic and professional career to research and development. Now, before applying to Cornell, I also had a paper published during my research work at Harvard, which I think made a big difference to my application. I worked on creating a lab-on-chip biosensor that could detect corneal ulcer infections from tear samples of mice. So the big question is, do Ivy Leagues really care this much about research? And the short answer to this is yes. If we take a look at what the Dean of Admissions at UPenn clearly stated, she said that one third of the admitted students engaged in academic research during their time in high school and many of them went on to co-author publications in leading journals. Now, this was for the class of 2026, so very recently. And it just goes to show that many of the top universities are looking for factors such as this. And the reason behind that was clearly stated by the ex-admissions and financial aid dean at Harvard, who went on to say, you can clearly see that standardized tests are relatively unimportant. Now, the reason why this is being said is because if 10 different students get 95 out of 100 in their exams, how do you differentiate all 10 of those? And that is where research and these intangible activities come into the picture. Now, if you're someone who's wondering where these research-based activities would go in your college application, Princeton clearly stated that the optional areas is the ideal place. Now, the optional documents allow students to submit things like their resume. You can also attach your entire research report, whether it's graded or whether it's published. And this is a great place to show academic rigor and the fact that you were involved in something that required high amounts of critical thinking and aptitude. So first, let's understand what research is all about. Now, research is the systematic investigation into and study of materials and sources in order to establish facts and reach new conclusions. In simple terms, it basically means you're trying to find a solution to improve something that already exists or basically just invent something new. Now, in this video, I'm going to break this down into four very easy steps on how you can ultimately publish your research paper. The first step is to find and get involved in research. Now, the most easiest and cheapest way to do this is to become an independent researcher. This typically involves trying to figure out what your interest is in high school and then pick a topic around that interest. Once you've identified the topic, you would look at what other scientists and researchers in the world are doing. This can be found online through published research papers and then see how you can improve what is already being done. Once you have a plan, once you have a set of ideas and theories that you want to apply, your work can be submitted potentially to low impact journals, science exhibitions, maybe inter-school competitions. And this is how you can go about doing it all by yourself. In some cases, you can also use DIY or science-based kits to support your research that you're doing. The second method is to collaborate with other people. Now, the advantage that this gives you is when you collaborate with other researchers, graduate students, people who are pursuing their PhDs, or even professors from universities, they will have a little bit more knowledge than you in that field. And together, more than one person doing some research can arrive at a bigger conclusion. Your research might be more valuable. You'll also be exposed to more resources. Some professors can even give you space in their lab to actually conduct experiments for your research. And most of these places, if you're wondering where you can actually reach out to these people, can be through LinkedIn. You can kind of try to see if local nearby colleges or universities have some openings where they're willing to collaborate and work on a research project and basically try to network your way around. The last way is to get involved with a research program. Now, the benefit of a research program is that most of them are online and they already have a pre-established structure that they make the students follow. So you don't have to try to figure out how to do everything by yourself. You'll have a structure, you'll have a mentor as well as potential teammates that can help you take your research forward. Now, looking at some pros and cons of these methods, the independent researcher is going to be the cheapest method, obviously, because you're working by yourself, you're not taking any outside help. 
but that also comes with a set of disadvantages, such as lack of guidance. Now, because you're working by yourself, you will not be introduced into a team. You wouldn't be able to go beyond the scope of whatever knowledge you have. So that is like the upper limit and threshold that you'll face while working alone. The next one is collaborative research. Now, the advantage of collaborative research is that you'll be able to enhance your communication skills and learn a lot from your seniors as well as your mentors. Now, this is truly invaluable. However, the biggest disadvantage I've seen is that not a lot of people want to collaborate with high school students. So you wouldn't be able to easily find a postdoc professor or even a master's student who would be willing to collaborate with you on a research paper. So there's a lot of like time that's spent in order to actually reach to a point where you have someone that you can work alongside. Lastly, coming to the research program, the biggest advantage is that you have a guided path, it's structured and you have to like put very little thinking into how you're going to do it. You have your project, you're working on it. The biggest disadvantage here is that these are expensive. So most research programs, if not all, are paid. So you'll be investing some amount of money going through these research programs and you may not get one-on-one -on -one time with the mentor as well. The second step to moving your research paper along is spending quality time on the actual research itself. Now you guys have to remember that Doing research is not something that happens in a week or two weeks. There are scientists and researchers out there that spend years on a particular topic trying to work towards publishing a paper. So the key thing here is to spend time reading. And that is the biggest tip out there. So you'll be going through tons of published research articles that are available to see the progress made in your field. Now, typically there are two types. There is the research paper and then we have a review article. The research paper is typically original work. So maybe a group of researchers have presented something that's new, something that they have identified and that is published in that research paper. On the other hand, a review article kind of has a summation and like the name suggests, it is a review of previous findings. So it can be something like a comparative data set. Now, if you're someone who's still trying to look through a topic and trying to figure out what you actually want to do, the review article will be your best friend. This is because in one review article, you can file multiple topics and see what is being done. So this is a great place to kind of look around to see where your interest actually lies. So this is a lot to take in. So I'm gonna to try to break this down through a simple, easy to understand example. Now let's take your cell phone for example. How a cell phone works, what is the technology behind it and the very first cell phone that was existed. That would be a research paper, something that's new, something that was invented, did not exist already. On the other hand, we have multiple cell phone companies out there. Apple, Nokia, Motorola, if that, that still exists. You have the Google phone. All of those different phones and how they compare to one another in how they work will be your review article. So that is the big difference. Something that was invented versus a review article that compares the different things that are out there based on that one sole technology. So here are some resources that will be helpful to you guys, whether you're trying to learn something new or just find research papers. Now, typically for everyone who's interested in computer science, these are some channels that I found interesting. Now, again, these channels will not basically help you do the research, but it's a good resource to know how to learn new concepts and stay up to date with what's going on. Similarly, on the right side over here, we have something for stats. Um, this is again good for business students and bioinformatics over here. Lastly, when you're actually trying to find published research papers, these three resources will be your best friends. This is where you can get research papers that are already published and open source, which means they are available online free, you don't have to pay for them, so you'll be able to read them online itself. The next step is to draft and write your research paper. Now again, this is an art in itself, and the biggest thing here is to make sure you are clear on what your research question is. What is it that you're actually trying to solve? After that, you'll have a few sections of your research paper, starting from the abstract, to the introduction, to the methodology that you used, the results that you received, the discussion, and finally a conclusion. Now, after your entire conclusion of the research paper, you also need to have acknowledgements as well as references and citations to reference previously used work. Now, few things to keep an eye out for, 
Do not use AI, chat GPT, all that stuff gets red flagged. Plagiarism is a huge deal. Your paper will get rejected if you use any of these tools. Now, if you guys need help kind of improving your writing structure, you can use these two books. These are just something I found online. Again, I'm not paid to say or recommend any of these just for reference as well as Grammarly that can help you improve your vocabulary as well as sentence structuring. Now the last step is to publish your research work. Now this is something that everybody waits for and has their hopes up high. So let's kind of break this down because there are a lot of journals out there. Now there are two broad categories these can be classified into. You have your peer review journals and your academic journals. Now the peer review journals is where your work will be looked at and reviewed by grad students or other scientists that have advanced degrees. Whereas in the academic journal, your work will be reviewed by professors and other subject matter experts. Now in general, whether you're trying to publish in peer reviewed or academic journals, there will be some amount of cost associated with it. The first is a submission cost. So when you are submitting your work to be published, you'll have to pay a small fee. It's lower for peer reviewed and higher for the academic journal. And when your work gets accepted, after it's accepted to get published, actually, there is a separate fee. Again, lower for peer review and higher for the academic journal. Now, over the last few years, getting published, especially for high school students, has become quite a controversial topic. And if you're a high school student who's looking into getting into research and potentially getting a publication, especially for your college applications, something I would highly suggest is reading this news article. It's a little long, but in a snapshot, what businesses have been doing lately over the last few years is turning getting published into a huge money mine. They charge students eight, ten thousand dollars just to publish one research paper. And doing research as a high school student, I personally believe there's nothing wrong with that. Research is a beautiful art. You're supposed to be learning so many skills out of it. But when you're trying to pay and then get published, that is where the problem arises. Now, I'm not saying that whatever these companies are, they're not providing enough value, but it just doesn't justify that $10,000 is equal to one research publication and somebody who spends $50,000 and gets five research publications is guaranteed a spot in the Ivy League. So it doesn't basically equate to that. I highly suggest reading this news article. It's available online and it's free. It just demystifies all of these businesses that are out there that are charging tens of thousands of dollars just to get high school students published. So with all of this out there, whatever I've learned over the last three to four years, I've kind of like summed it all up in a very structured format to help students like you that are out there at a very affordable price to actually get your research going. Again, remember that the aim isn't to get published because that puts unnecessary amounts of stress on both the students as well as the entity that's trying to guide you. That's not the goal of research. The goal in general is to learn a specific amount of skill set. That's exactly what the research bootcamp by Incognito Blueprints does. Now, the first thing is it is two months compared to other programs that are like four to six months. Honestly, four to six months for a high school student is just not manageable because you guys have so many other things that are going on. If you were someone whose full-time job was to do research, four to six months is great. You have that time to spend, but you're focusing on exams and other activities. So you need something in a shorter amount of time. The second aspect is expectations. The goal isn't to publish. The goal is to teach you guys how research is done, get you started with one project, give you resources that you'll have lifelong on where you can find journals to publish, how you can write research papers, how you can find your own research and even do more beyond the research bootcamp. So in short, the research bootcamp isn't going to be like tuition classes or you learning concepts of math, coding, biology and all of that. That's what your school is for. On the other hand, you'll be learning how to take a research project forward. So how you actually work effectively towards cutting edge concepts and do a lot of self-learning. And if you're interested in knowing what kind of skills you'll gain out of this, I usually like to divide this into two parts. You'll have a set of technical skills like critical thinking, um, literature review, hypothesis building, design of experiments, and interpersonal skills like leadership, communication, all of that good stuff. Because towards the end of the bootcamp, 
top few teams are also invited to present to all of the other students. So there is slightly a bit of a competitive nature and I feel like all of this put together helps students just learn from one another and helps build a community. We still have students from last year's summer research programs that are still in contact with each other. Um, we have teams that have taken their projects and gotten them published in journals even after the bootcamp has gotten over. So this unique opportunity truly provides students with a start to their research project rather than just a two month start and stop point. So I'm gonna leave a link to the research bootcamp in the description below. Enrollment has already opened by this point, so you're more than welcome to sign up. The enrollment will close after we hit a certain number of students, so please don't wait till the very end because you may lose out on your spot and I'll see you guys this summer, at least a few of you. And that's all that I had for this video. Like the video if you're watching till this point, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.